recording. Okay. You're all set. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Town Services and Outreach Committee. This is our regular meeting for October 13th. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And so at this time, we're going to call to order and I'm going to ask everyone, uh, TSO first, if they can hear and uh, be heard. So, um, Anna. Hello, everyone. And Andy. Hello, Anna. Andy. I'm here. And Dorothy, we just heard you and welcome. Okay, and also let's welcome Jennifer. Jennifer, can you hear us? And can we hear you? Yes, I can hear you. Thank okay, you. we've heard Paul and Athena. Okay, so uh, with that, we're without further ado, we will move on to our hearing, our public hearing. Our first hearing will be the public hearing on a permanent request to reserve three parking spaces directly in front of Hope Community Church Sanctuary at 16 Gaylord Street for use by Hope Community Church. Public hearings are an opportunity for residents to address the council and council committees on specific issues. The comments may be presented orally or in writing. While some public hearings may be required by MGL, the town charter, or by council rules of procedure, the council may choose to hold a public hearing on any topic it chooses. In this case, the council has designated the town services committee to hold public hearings on its behalf regarding the public way. Uh, the time allotted to the public hearings at any meeting of the council shall not be more than three hours duration at any one session unless the council votes to waive this limitation. If necessary, a future date, time, and place. Uh, certain for continuance shall be required for any uncompleted hearing. Okay, hearings authorized by the council shall have precedence over other presentations. In all hearings, the case of the petitioner shall have precedence except when the president or chair shall prescribe otherwise. So with this, we're moving right into Hope Community Church. And Athena, may I please ask um, that you are able to pull up um, the map and information regarding um, Hope Church and Gaylord Street. And would you like me to summarize the proposal? Anything? Oh, yes, yes, please, please. Okay. So um, just to give you some background, I know uh, Pastor Carlos isn't able to join us tonight, but this is a fairly simple request. They, the church asked that the town council designate permanently three parking spaces on Gaylord Street, directly in front of the Hope Community Church Sanctuary. The Hope Church has no uh, parking of its own. Um, and this is, as, as Anika said, it's at 16 Gaylord Street. Gaylord Street is a small, narrow street that runs between South Prospect Street and Lincoln Avenue. It's currently posted as permit parking Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, September to May. The proposal would identify, the, the request was to identify three parking spaces and reserve them. And um, we have reviewed the, re asked the police department, the fire department, and the public works to department to review this request. Since the proposal does not create or eliminate on-street parking, they have each determined that there's no impact on public safety or traffic since it is only the use of the spaces that is being changed. Um, so we've looked at this and looked at our general uh, parking, and these, these are the images of the road that we're talking about. We've looked at this and talk, um, talked about how we can be consistent with current town um, uh, ways we handle parking. So for many, many uh, for several churches downtown, they have special bags. If they have um, a funeral or something like that, they are able to place these bags over the parking meters, which reserves the spaces so they can have the, uh, the spaces in front of their um, churches. 
there are no parking meters in front of the Hope Church. Um, they would like to have the same rights that other churches have in terms of reserving parking in front of their facility for, for, for uh, their church gatherings and things like that. So one of the things that we've talked about, and I talked about this with Reverend Carlos, uh, was that we could, if the council chose, it could designate those three parking spaces uh, in front of the church for use, exclusive use by the church when they need it. They don't need it 24 hours a day. They don't need it every day. What they need it is for when they have a church service for um, a funeral or some event. And so one of the solutions we came up with is that we would give them some uh, plastic stanchions that they could place in the road that would reserve the parking in front of their church. And then when they don't need the parking, they could remove them and it would be open to anybody with a resident parking sticker during certain time if that's what was required at that time. But then if they did need them, you know, because they have an event or something like that, they could put them back in front of the church and reserve the space. And uh, I think Reverend Carlos uh, thought that, was, that would work for them. Um, we could monitor this. and I would recommend that we look at this for a period of time, say to, to the end of June of next year and see how it's working for everyone and then revisit it, use it, look at it as sort of a pilot program to see if it's, it's, it's um, acceptable to everyone. Thank you, Paul. And I did speak with Reverend Carlos as well, and he did ask me to extend his uh, appreciation. He's thankful. He thinks this is a great solution. Um, he also wanted me to let everyone know that um, he would be here with us. However, his congregation is there holding, as we speak, a virtual celebration for his birthday, uh, but he does invite everyone to attend uh, the Hope Church services at 10 a.m. on this coming Sunday, um, which is one of their first um, openings and um, full services um, this Sunday at 10, 10 a.m. for his birthday. And I guess, and I'm sure you all join me in wishing him a very happy 71st rotation around the sun. Wow. Uh, so happy birthday, Carlos. Uh, and, and with that, um, I think that was very clear. Thank you, Paul. Do we have, what, we do have counselor questions, Dorothy. Uh, so my question is, I, I like the idea, but let's just say that they're having a church event and they go to put the stanchions up and a car with a parking permit is parked there. Um, do the cars, which is, I believe they can do it all the time, 24 hours, during the week, but on the weekend, they not do it. I'm just wondering how would they make sure that they could put those stanchions in if a car was parked there already? So we would advise them to do it in advance. The same thing, ha the same challenge happens for any church that's trying to block off a, a parking okay. meter. Uh, if they do it well in advance, most people aren't there 24 hours for weeks on end, okay, especially good. this section of, of Gaylord. This is the people who park here tend to be working downtown and they utilize this as a parking location for, for their work. Okay, good, um, thank you. Yes, and they, um, Carlos did seem very confident that this would, you know, that this would be um, an acceptable solution and, and work well and appreciates that we will be following up and monitoring. Uh, were there any other questions? here in the council. Okay, uh, so with that, I'd like to open up if we have any public questions or comments for the Hope Church parking on Gaylord Street. Any questions for the Hope, Hope Church only questions at this point or public comment? And I'm sorry, Athena, I hate to lean on you for everything, um, but I cannot see if we have hands up. Anika, there's one hand up for Hope Church. Okay. I don't know if Athena is able to, it's um, James, but I, yeah, there we go. Okay, okay. Um, welcome, welcome James. James. Hi, Barna. thanks. Thanks so much, I'm Jim Barna. Um, and I care deeply about parking in Amherst. Um, I think this is a good solution. Um, I like solutions that don't exclude parking places permanently. Um, and um, 
I just want to speak out in favor of the town council having a comprehensive parking review of all the parking outside of the downtown to enable working people to park during the day and to walk or bike to the places they want to go to. I, I am not in favor of private landowners um, trying to exclude the spaces in front of their property from parking. Um, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you for your comment, James. Um, are there any other comments? This would, these comments right now are for Hope <clears throat> Gaylord Street alone. Okay. Not seeing any? No, there is another comment. There is, okay. <clears throat> Okay, welcome, Sophia Purse. Please forgive me if I've mispronounced your last name. Please unmute and share your comment. I just want to say I agree with the solution, and I think that is going to work out good. Thank you, Sophia. Okay. Now with that, um, I do not see further comment. Are there further questions? Okay. So with that, we have a motion. I can make that a thought to close the hearing on per the permanent request to reserve three parking spaces directly in front of Hope Community Church Sanctuary at 16 Gaylord Street for use by Hope Community Church. Second. Did you need a second to close it? Right, we're closing. We're not doing the motion, right? Right. Okay. Right. Hearing closed. Um, and as we do have, we do need a vote on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I go ahead? And so, okay. Excuse me. We need to vote before the hearing is closed. We need to okay. vote to close the hearing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Andy. Yes, yes. Anna. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I'm a yes, and Michelle and me is absent. So that is closed. Now, am I clear? We do have a few extra minutes. If the committee is okay with this, am I clear to make a motion? Yes. Okay, so I would like to make a motion to recommend the town Council to recommend to the town council that it approve the designation of three parking spaces in front of Hope Church on Gaylord Street for use by the church for church operations, such spaces to be reviewed to be reserved only on an as needed basis utilizing portable parking cones that would be placed by the Hope Church. This arrangement will serve as a pilot to be reviewed prior to June 30, 2020, 2023. A fee shall be established by the town manager to cover the cost of implementation, signage, et cetera. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you. Okay. So and you get, if I may, I just want to point out that we're that we're now in agenda item three, the deliberation portion. Oops. Oopsie. Which which is fine because we have a minute. Um, but but there should be a, an opportunity to have any discussion before okay. the vote. Is there is any discussion? Does anyone have anything to say about the motion? No? Okay, are we clear to move forward, Athena? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, so Anna. Hi. Andy. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I am an I, and Shawnee is absent. So thank you all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think it is exactly 7.15. So, okay. So, uh, so we are going to move on to the public hearing on the following proposed parking regulation changes. To prohibit parking on the east side of Lincoln Avenue between McClellan Street and Amity Street from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday to prohibit parking on the east side of Sunset Avenue between Elm Street and Amity Street at all times 
to prohibit parking on the side, on one side of Elm Street at all times. And with that, I would like to pass the, open the floor to Jennifer Taub. Thank you for joining us and please proceed with your presentation. Okay, thank you so much for, um, for having me. And um, I would like to, if I could share the screen, I'm gonna try, I'd like to, you know, just sort of provide some context and an overview of what's being requested. And um, I prepared a brief slideshow because I thought that would also keep me from talking too much. Because once I start talking about parking, <laughs> I could bore you to death. So um, if I can share my screen, are, are you seeing it? Yes. Okay. So, um, and I'm gonna have to make you smaller so I can see the screen. So I wanted to start with what the motion that um, I brought to town council on June 6th of this year, and that the council referred to the town services and outreach committee. And it was very simple and kind of, and broad. It was a, we were, it was a request for consideration of implementing parking regulations on the east side of Lincoln Avenue between Amity and McClellan Streets. Um, and it wasn't specifically to um, restrict parking during certain hours. And I did want to reiterate that the request for some level of parking management and regulations on this portion of Lincoln between McClellan and Amity Street, where there's currently no restrictions on the east side of the street is that um, this is first and foremost a public safety issue. That as the town manager wrote to town council two and a half years ago, back in March of 2020, that quote, Lincoln Avenue has created a potentially hazardous situation when the parking inhibits the travel of cars going north and south simultaneously. It has also created challenges to residents exiting their driveways and it's made safe biking a concern. In the same memo, it was stated that Lincoln Avenue is one of the busiest streets in Amherst during the work week, especially when UMass is in session. And during the last council session, the town services and um, outreach committee did recommend, so the way we got to requesting or the request before us now of a no parking restriction on the east side of Lincoln Avenue between McClellan and Amity from eight to five on weekdays during from September 1st to May 31st is that that is what the TSO of the last council recommended that the full council adopt um, or vote to approve. And so, um, Quoting the chair, um, Evan Ross was chair of TSO in October of 2021. And in his memo to the council, um, you know, communicating TSO's uh, vote to, to make this recommendation back to the council, he said that given Lincoln Avenue is a collector roadway with high traffic flow and pavement width that does not meet the recommended width for two way traffic plus a parking lane. The criteria suggests that parking should not be allowed um, on Lincoln Avenue. So I do want to, um, you know, um, sort of make clear that either myself as the sponsor of this motion or for any of the residents um, on the affected streets have never asked for a parking ban. And actually, you know, I was hoping not to have to bring the motion back to council and have it go to TSO and, the, you know, have us be here again. And so, you know, I did reach out to the town to see if there were some lesser regulations or restrictions that, you know, weren't quite so broad, such as maybe having a two or four hour parking restriction, um, which would just sort of break up the long line of cars, but it wouldn't take parking, you know, it, it, it would allow some parking on this part of the street during the weekday during the school year. And the residents said they would even be happy if the sidewalks could be painted yellow on either side of the driveway curb cuts so that cars park right up to the driveways and they're narrow driveways on the street. So it really impedes the, um, the, the sight lines as emergency vehicles or residents, you know, pulling in out of their driveways and not infrequently the cars park over the entrances to the driveway and then the cars only, you know, can't get in and out. 
And we were told that these lesser remedies are actually not you know, feasible to enforce. So that's how we got back to you know, the recommendation that the last town services and outreach committee made. So by way of some background and context, for more than 10 years, issues concerning parking vehicle usage and general safety of the bicycle and pedestrian community have been raised in the neighborhood south of UMass. Lincoln has long been used as a through street from the University to Amity Street and Northampton Road. And adding greater urgency to the request now is that in fall 2023, 824 residents will be moving on to the north end of Lincoln when the two new UMass dormitories open at the corner of Lincoln and Massachusetts avenues. For these 824 residents, there will only be 100 on-site parking spaces. So when this happens, uh, Lincoln Avenue will no longer probably, this is what I would anticipate, this is me, that when this happens, Lincoln Avenue will no longer be providing parking for commuters who were coming for the day to either work or go to classes at UMass, but it will essentially become a long-term parking lot for the residents of the new dorms. And I, I'm not, this isn't supposed to be hyperbolic, but you, on the stretch of Lincoln we're talking about, there, you could park 24 seven. And we've seen it happen now that, you know, cars stay on the street overnight. And I've seen cars during, like spring break at school, just be on the block for the entire week. So it may be that a student went home with a friend. So you could, there's no restriction. And I would anticipate, and I've heard the uh, superintendent of DPW say that he envisions it being a very difficult, you know, a difficult situation when the new dorms open. But, and I'll show you on a map, there are literally 11 houses between the new dorm and this part of Lincoln Avenue, very, very short walk from the dorms to the part of Lincoln Avenue with no parking restrictions. And I would anticipate since the residents there will not need their cars to drive to school, that the cars will be there for days or weeks on, you know, continuously, they would never have to move. And so I think that when people come to park in the morning, they'll see that the spaces are taken with cars that have been there overnight. So given all of this, that is happening, uh, the pressure on this, you know, part of the community that the Transportation Advisory Council, when they reviewed this motion, said, quote, that no other Amherst neighborhood is facing such a rapid increase in nearby residents, related traffic, and parking demand with limited on-site parking supply. So the facts on the ground, Lincoln is 24 um, to 25 feet wide with two lanes of traffic and a parking lane. The recommended width for a road with two lanes of traffic and a parking lane is 27 to 32 feet. Weekdays during the academic year, cars park end to end, forming a solid line on Lincoln from McClellan to Amity, impeding the flow of two-way tra traffic and obstructing sight lines for residents in emergency vehicles. Cars must um, slow to a stop and pull over to wait for vehicles approaching from the other direction to pass. In fact, the school bus to Wildwood had to change its approach to the street because it was getting behind schedule, stopping and waiting for cars to pass. And when cars approaching from opposite directions fail to stop, they come really close to side swiping. I mean, I've actually seen cars where the side window hit. And during winter, when it snows, the street becomes almost impassable. So, um, Yesterday, the parent of three young children who li live on Lincoln uh, wrote this to the town council, quote, the cars on Lincoln are routinely parked on the side of our driveway so close to the driveway that my kids and their friends have a very hard time seeing around them. The cars are also parked back to back so tightly that there is often not a clear path for the kids to cross the street safely without having to step out in front of a car to see if it's safe to cross. This lack of visibility makes it a hazard to cross the street, especially for small people like children. Cars also park so close to the line of our driveway that we frequently don't have a clear path to exit our property, not to mention visibility is even very challenging higher in a car. I've almost been hit exiting our driveway several times because cars were parked in the road and I was unable to see the other cars coming." Unquote. So to provide another a visual, um, this is um, 
Okay, so this is the part of Lincoln Avenue, you can see my cursor, right, that we're talking about. This is McClellan and this is Amity. And this green line, you can park 24 seven, 365 days a year. Now I'm gonna move over to this map because here again, here's McClellan, here's McClellan. McClellan to Fearing, there is a no parking restriction on the east side of the street from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. So it will really, so the request is, the, or the request that's now before TSO is to extend this yellow line down to Amity. So it's restricting weekday parking um, during the, and then this part, it's only asking for during the academic year um, from eight to five. Now, just to provide a little, just so you can get how close everything is, right here, these are the new dorms. This is gonna be a 201 bed um, graduate student dorm and a 623 bed undergraduate dorm. So this is between Mass Avenue and Fearing Street. So here's the southernmost dorm. It's literally next door to a house. So to give you a sense of how close these dorms are with 825 students to right here where the parking, where there's unrestricted parking from this dorm here is 11, 11 houses and the houses are you know, close together. So one can certainly anticipate that the residents of these new um, complexes, you know, will then have unfettered um, access 24 seven to parking. So um, on this street and on Sunset, so on Lincoln Sunset and Elm, the parking, um, we don't see uh, patrons and employees of downtown business establishments parking here. It's really just during the academic year. And it will probably be weekends when the new dorms open, but mostly now it's weekdays. So this picture here was taken on, I think Wednesday, August 31st at noon, a week before fall semester began. This is one week later, 2.30 in the afternoon on Tuesday, September 6th. So again, the parking is um, you know, spillover related to the university, not to downtown business establishments. And so what we see is, so here's a car, a truck parked on the east side of the street, and then a car goes around it, and there's really very little room for a car to park in the opposite direction. And I believe this is a car that stopped probably to let this car pass. Um, and then this is what, you know, is also a concern um, is cars parking over the driveway curb cuts. And certainly when it happens on both sides at the same time, then you just can't get in or out. And there have been situations where emergency medical vehicles were called to a house and they could not get to the driveway. And then there were cars parked, you know, end to end on the street. So they had to park down the block. Uh, and again, this is just another kind of example of, of what the street looks like. So I will stop sharing. Okay. So, um, so, so that's where we find ourselves. And again, you know, we were open to any suggestions that you know, or recommendations that TSO would have, but, um, you know, when the last, when it was before TSO last year, uh, the superintendent of public works and the town engineer and the fire chief and police chief, you know, concurred that for reasons of public safety, there should be some parking management and restrictions on these streets. Thank you. And any questions? Thank you, Jennifer. Before we move into questions, were we having, or do we have Tracy Zafran with us? Yeah, hi. Oh, you're right there. Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Um, yes, um, please go right ahead. Okay, so I'm here because I was asked to speak uh, briefly about the tax recommendations. Um, the TSO has had the tax recommendations since July, and then they served as the basis for the public hearing notice that went out in terms of the potential possible restrictions. Um, so they were reviewed to that extent, not that TSO fully agreed with everything that we were recommending. Um, so, you know, just to recap what uh, Councillor Losa said, so we, we basically were recommending, you know, we were asked to discuss the idea of prohibiting the parking on the east side of Lincoln between McClellan and Amity, you know, during the weekdays eight to five. 
um, which would basically extend the current the area north of there that has restrictions eight to five um and we supported that uh prohibition you know based on the safety concerns that councillor top has raised and um i mean we didn't make um we didn't discuss about whether it should be school year or year round only like most of the restrictions in that neighborhood if you look back at that parking restriction map, like most of the restrictions that area are year round because it is not part of the downtown parking district. So the downtown parking district is has restrictions only September to May, whereas the restrictions in place on say Fearing and Sunset and North Hadley Road and all of those streets are year round. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, when we looked at this issue attack over the summer, I mean, we did revisit some of the earlier memos that had been prepared by the town, including the March uh, 2020 memo that was just from the town manager, which had supported having restrictions um, on Lincoln. And, um, and those recommendations were developed you know, by the town engineer in consultation with the superintendent of public works, the fire chief, the police chief, and so on. And so, I mean, we did give quite a bit of weight to the people who had weighed in at that time on their safety concerns. I know that um, TAC members have previously, like at the previous TSO, uh, when the council was first formed, this is when the issue of Lincoln came up. I think it first came before the council, in probably even like 2019, 2020. And, um, and TAC members did attend the TSO meetings at that time, and we did express concerns about some of the same safety issues that have been raised both in that memo and by Councilor Todd tonight, including the issues about some of the poor sight lines at the roadway intersections and the driveway intersections. And as, um, as somebody in my background is in driver safety and driver training, and that that is like a major cause of how uh, people get hit. It's a major risk in terms of when you have poor sight lines at driveways and um, you can hit pedestrians or you can hit other vehicles and so on. It is a major concern. It's something we always train a lot when we're doing driver training. Um, and we do think that it is likely that the parking demand on Lincoln will grow with these new, once these new dorms are open. So my understanding from information provided by UMass is, as Councillor Todd said, that there'll be 824 beds. UMass typically estimates that there are about, they need about half a parking space per bed because some students don't have cars. Um, I don't know whether they vary that for undergrad or graduates. They also haven't recalculated that, I don't think, since COVID. And there are more students bringing cars to campus now than there used to be. But my understanding is that there's also going to be only 100 parking spaces on site there and that, um, that the other students will be asked to park elsewhere. I know myself as a UMass employee that sometimes the only available parking for me to get a parking permit is really far, um, like across campus or something. So if that's the case, there will be some students, I think, who will gravitate to try to park in much more convenient locations. Um, so that is a concern. Um, just a few other points, right? So we recommended prohibiting parking on the east side of Lincoln. So we extend, you know, because we were looking at it holistically in terms of what other streets could be impacted, we did think that if Lincoln becomes more restricted, that there could be some carryover pressures on Sunset. Um, sunset, we didn't measure it, but Sunset is about the same width as Lincoln. And Lincoln currently, if you look at the current restrictions, Lincoln is restricted on one side of the road, all the whole length of Lincoln, north of Amity, um, where there's no parking allowed at all. And I think that those there's valid reasons for that, safety reasons. And for those same reasons, we recommended prohibiting parking on one side of Sunset. Um, almost every property on Lincoln and Sunset all have driveways and things. And if you prohibit on the one side, people are still able to park on the other side. Um, and if we look at, you know, other like other parking restrictions elsewhere in town, I mean, if you're looking north of the campus, right, like Hobart Lane and Valley Lane, Old Town Road, they also ban parking on one side of the street. And there's some um, that ban parking on both sides of the street. Like even some of the ones that were shown on the map, like um, like Fearing, North Hadley Road, and so on. I'll also mention here, just as we bring up North Hadley Road, that when it came before the council originally, some one argument for not doing anything 
to restrict parking on Lincoln more at that time was that, well, Lincoln is going to be closed at Mass Ave while all this construction is going on. And that is true that when you go when you go on Lincoln um, north of Fearing, you can't get through on Lincoln. However, if you are going in that direction, and a lot of people have realized this, you know, even I, as somebody who drives to Campo sometimes didn't realize it first, you can actually take North Hadley Road and like right past the Southwest dorms and come out right on Mass Ave the same way. So, you know, at first people might've been, when they got to fear and they see it's closed, they say, oh no, I can't drive that way. But then you say, oh, but wait, I actually can. And so, I mean, the people on Lincoln anecdotally, I don't know if um, data has been collected, but it seems like there's basically the same amount of traffic as there was before. And and the Lincoln residents also report that they haven't seen a change in like the parking patterns. Um, so it's still pretty easy to get all the way to the center of campus by taking Lincoln. Um, and then, so, so one of the things is, so we recommended prohibiting parking on the east side of Lincoln, not that, I mean, on Sunset, not that there's so many parking pressures on Sunset right now, but just the issue of, is if there is going to be more parking pressure, it made sense to us to only have parking on one side of the street. Um, and the same with Elm. So Elm is currently restricted on both sides of the street, eight to five, Monday through Friday. There are only a few houses on Elm. They do have driveways. But again, it's just a small street. And I thought about like what we were thinking about. What if, you know, all of a sudden, like all weekend or things, there's like cars parked on both sides of Elm you know, on both sides of the street and you can't really, again, you have the same issues with the sight lines and the safety and things like that. And so it just didn't really seem necessary. And again, people are welcome to park on the other side of Elm and there's the driveways as well. And um, and we did recommend, I mean, I know that council's agenda is very full, but like once the dorms are open that it all be revisited. Um, I mean, I've heard that one concern that people on Sunset have is even with this new proposal that it doesn't go far enough in terms of um, helping address potential safety issues that could be raised there. But until the dorms are open and until we see where, how much traffic there actually is and things, we don't know that for sure. So, um, so that was where we made that recommendation. But I'm happy to answer any questions if that's helpful. Oh, and I will also just mention, sorry, um, when um, um, Jim Barno was speaking during the, comment period for the first hearing. I mean, I think, you know, TAC does agree with his suggestion that there be a comprehensive parking review of parking all over town and on street parking policies. I mean, it really can vary significantly neighborhood to neighborhood. Like I remember in, I know in North Amherst, there's some neighborhoods where they actually allow parking during the day, but then restrict parking, like they ban parking at night, because what they found is that students going to or, you know, college age people going to late night, um, you know, late night events at people's houses were parking in their quiet neighborhood and then coming back to their cars later at night, like two, three in the morning and so on. And it was disturbing the neighbors. So the neighbors at that time had requested, said, we don't want anybody to park on our street at night. Um, <clears throat> and so I know that, you know, TAC, I've only been on TAC a few years, but parking, Parking recommendations are part of tax charge as it still stands. I know that that charge is being reworked and I've been in touch with the town manager on that. Um, but also we have, TAC also has made some recommendations regarding townwide parking. And um, so, but I do agree with the idea that not just the downtown area, but overall in town, we should be looking at some of the parking issues, parking needs, so thanks. Okay, thank you so much, Tracy. We'll now open with council questions for Jennifer and or Tracy. Um, please go ahead, Anna. I, this might sound, um, you know what, I'm not gonna preface my question. How did you choose the east side versus the west side of the street in terms of which side to, to pick for people to park on? Um, well, we based it on the fact that there were more driveways on the east side of the street. So we saw more potential conflicts with um, with the sight lines and with passersby, both pedestrians and other vehicles. Okay. And on the west side, you have like Sunset Farm and you have some larger properties. And so you don't have as many driveways. Thank you. And 
any other right. questions? Oh, go, go ahead. I do have, I have uh, oh, if Dorothy wants to go first, that's fine. I already asked one, so she can go. Okay, Dorothy, okay. an honor. Um, this is a question for Paul. When we had the uh, parking study, uh, we paid these experts a number of years ago. Uh, one of their suggestions had been, this is just an overall parking comment, that we explore public par private uh, partnerships and that there were many, many private little lots scattered all over the place, particularly near the downtown area, that some kind of arrangements could be made maybe for parking of people's staff so that they don't have to park on the, the streets. I'm just wondering if anything ever happened in that area. So that study did not include Lincoln. So uh, it wouldn't be relevant to this, but uh, you know, I don't know if there have been, we have reached out to people who own private lots, but no one has been open to uh, engaging with the town to, to uh, okay. provide parking. Okay, thank you. Anna. Uh, so this is something, and this is maybe on us as TSO, but um, we have, do we have comments on this situation from uh, the fire department and APD on the safety element of? Mm -hmm. So the original proposal from the town staff included uh, the recommendations from APD, AFD, and DPW. And what I suggested to the chair is that if you have questions for them during during the discussion, you can identify what those questions are. We can invite them during your deliberation when you meet next, if there are, are individuals that you would like to have here, or if there are specific questions that you need answered, we can pose those questions as well. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Jennifer. I was just gonna say, I think it also speaks to that in uh, the packet in the town manager's memo from March 5th, 2020. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Are there any other questions here? Okay, so if we could, let's open up to uh, public comment and questions. Let's see, let me see over here. Okay, um, if I can see, I don't know why I'm having a partial view, but I see, is it David Slovacher? Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Hi, David, please unmute. Un unmute, I'm unmuted. Can you, can you hear me and maybe even see me? We cannot see you. We can read your name, but we can't see okay. you. Okay. Oh, all right. I didn't know what to expect in terms of was I going to be visible. So I will just make my, my brief comments. Thank you for calling on me. You've already heard the reasons why Lincoln Avenue needs a restriction on weekend parking, on weekday parking. The close calls, blocked driveways, impaired sight lines, near misses, badly impeded traffic flow, including emergency vehicles, and the basic problem of a street that is too narrow to accommodate parking. But also important to consider are the reasons that do not apply, but have become distortions and distractions from the real issue, which is safety. The issue is not about one neighborhood asking for special treatment. It is about a problem being safe. It is not about opposition to UMass, it is about safety. It is also not about FedEx, UPS, Amazon, or landscapers, all of which are there for brief periods and easy to get around. And it is definitely not about an us versus them attitude towards UMass students and staff. It is only about safety. It certainly is not about a failure to sympathize with people who are seeking an alternative to high price parking. We understand that, but do not feel it is the responsibility of one high volume narrow street to provide an alternative for a limited number of cars. UMass has come up with a policy that provides, UMass has to come up with a policy that provides parking for its employees. The 20 to 24 cars which regularly park on Lincoln do not put a dent in the UMass parking issue, 
yet it drastically alters Lincoln Avenue, both for the residents and drivers. The issue is also not about the right to park on public roads. The right to park does not override public safety. The problem of weekday parking on Lincoln Avenue originates with UMass's failure to provide enough reasonably priced parking for its students and staff. It is neither fair nor appropriate for the town of Amherst in general, a particular neighborhood or a specific street to be asked to assume the burden for UMass's failure to address the issue. Thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity. Thank you, David, for joining us and for your comment. Okay, I see Ken Rosenthal. Anika, it might be appropriate to remind people if they'd like to make a comment, they should raise their hand. And right now we have 23 people in attendance with four people with their hands raised. Okay, if there is anyone else aside from the four out of 23 that have their hands up, please raise your hands now so we can make sure to get to you and account for time. Um, and okay, and with that, thank you for joining us. Ken Rosenthal, please proceed with your comments. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to speak. I'm Ken Rosenthal. I live at 53 Sunset Avenue. I've owned my house here for 18 years. And I have lived in Amherst on and off since 1956. So I've seen the changes in Amherst and I've seen changes in my neighborhood in particular. <clears throat> I don't want to be redundant, but I do want to emphasize a couple of things. And I appreciated Tracy's comment, but I want to make one correction. <clears throat> Sunset Avenue, is not the same size as Lincoln. It's, an, it's a, a foot narrower. And I've measured it three times. I've measured both, <clears throat> excuse me. So the, the difficulty of car passage and sight lines on Lincoln are um, increased on Sunset Avenue. I wanna emphasize again that we are in a neighborhood close to the University of Massachusetts by choice. We understand that this is a neighborhood that serves the university in many ways, residential and otherwise, and for traffic. This is simply, as David Sloviter put it, a question of safety. Uh, we are on narrower street than Lincoln, so I would hope that any um, regulations you adopt or recommend to be adopted for Lincoln would apply also to Sunset, because I can tell you that as soon as there are limitations on Sunset, that inconvenience a few people, and it's only a few people. Those few people, if, they, if they're inconvenienced on Lincoln, they'll come to Sunset. I've already had people who are UMass day trippers park in front of my house for a semester. When the semester is over, they're gone. I know not where. I hope they graduated. Um, we know that worse is going to come, not just because of the housing that's going to be on Lincoln, but because there was a new housing development at the end of Sunset too right opposite Southwest. So we can expect that those folks will want to park where we live. Weekend parking is not a problem here. Uh, the, the problem, and, and, and I have sat with David Sloviter on his porch and watched where people go when they park their cars. We have seen no one walk to town. We have seen everyone walk to the university. And I've watched cars pull up there, two cars in a row, the person in the first car parks the car and locks it, gets into the second car and off they go onto the campus. Clearly that tells me that what they've done is decided to have one driver uh, split the uh, parking fee on the university parking lot with the other driver. So let me again say, we're interested in, in safety. It's not necessary that parking be banned all the time. If you find it convenient just to park it during term time at the university, that's fine with us, but please, Whatever you do for Lincoln, make sure that on both sides of the street on Sunset, you do the same thing, or we will simply be back with you in another six months telling you that we have the same problem now that Lincoln had before, only on a street that is one foot narrower. And thank you very much for listening to me tonight. Thank you, Ken Rosenthal. Okay, next I see Molly Schultz. Excuse me if I mispronounced your last name. 
It's okay, everyone does. Can you hear me all right? Very well. All right. Uh, I am a commuter student at UMass Amherst. And I do park on that street. Um, my first question is, is there a record of how many accidents have actually happened along that street in say the past 10 years? Because thank you very much for the PowerPoint. I hadn't heard the other side of things and I'm glad to have been able to hear the opposition. Um, I agree that it definitely does make the street rather narrow and difficult to pass on, but I wonder how many times anything dangerous has actually happened. Because in my experience, when two cars pass, they slow down to about five miles an hour and go very carefully. Is there a record of that anywhere? Uh, Tracy? Well, I know that it's not, you know, during public hearings, right, the account, the committee doesn't need to respond to comments, but I'll just say that I have been looking at, I mean, there are records to the mass DOT databases for crashes. Um, for Lincoln, and it's quite extensive, but um, I haven't like summarized some of that data. I th I think that the DPW did summarize it at one point. Um, I don't I don't have my hands on that data, but um, that incident at least smaller incidents are reported on Lincoln pretty regularly. So, but I'm sure that that information could be provided to you in more detail. All right, thank you. Um. Thank you, uh, Tracy, and thank you, Molly, for your comment and question. Uh, Dorothy, we'll, we will come back to you when we go back to um, council questions. Uh, next, I have Michelle Miller. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Can you hear me? Very well. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a couple disclosures. One, I am here in my personal capacity tonight. I am a town councilor representing District 1. Um, and just along the same lines, um, I do not obviously live on Lincoln or near Lincoln. So um, coming, you know, without uh, a whole history, except the history tonight was very interesting. So I thank Councilor Todd for that. Um, I'm coming because I this past weekend visited Montreal and I wanted to share something that Montreal is doing that I thought was really interesting and maybe something for Paul and TSO to consider. Um, so I was staying in an Airbnb in a mostly residential neighborhood. I think the parking users were permanent residents, Airbnb users, maybe some students, um, definitely business owners. Um, and so there was a, a mix of people using the streets. And what they have is uh, a, essentially a parking permit that is sold at the local grocery stores and convenience stores. It's for a 24 hour period. It costs $6 per 24 hour period. It's a super creative design. Um, it's it looks like a scratch off ticket, um, so that they they can use these for long periods of time. Because essentially, the day that you're using it, you scratch off the month, the day, and the year, um, and so you can buy a stack of them and you can use them throughout the year, um, and you just affix them onto your window. So I thought it was a really creative way to deal with parking. Their issues were probably more leaning toward the Airbnb usage, um, but it's not completely unsimilar to, you know, what we might be dealing with in our residential neighborhood. So I will send, uh, I brought, actually, I will physically bring Paul. <laughs> I brought a couple copies for Paul. Um, it is in French. So <laughs> hopefully um, somebody in the, in the town hall might know how to read it, but it's pretty simple. It's pretty, uh, and it's really, really neat um, and just something worth considering. So thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Michelle. I might be able to help you out with a little translation, Paul. Yes, awesome. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, and I have next we have Shannon. Please unmute and share. Hey, can you hear me uh, all right? Yes. Okay, thanks so much for uh, hosting us for this meeting. I'm sorry, I have a really bad sinus infection, so I'll try to speak clearly, but I'm pretty congested. Um, 
So uh, I live on Lincoln with my family and I wanted to just share the perspective of somebody who has children on this street. Um, I work in higher ed, uh, my partner works at UMass. We, are, we chose to live in a college community and share the community with students. We're really happy to do that. It's what we desired. At the same time, we feel very concerned about not only the parking on the street, but also how frequently cars speed up and down the street. And you know, to respond to the last, uh, a few uh, participants ago, uh, commenting about the rate of accidents, uh, I can tell you I'm very worried that when there is an accident that it could be a fatal one for children. Uh, the cars on Lincoln are routinely parked so close to the side of our driveway that we don't have a clear exit uh, with our own vehicle and even high up sitting in a car, it's very <clears throat> difficult to back out safely. And we have a, a driver who is a teenager and she's learning how to drive and she's uh, been almost hit several times as have we when we're exiting the driveway. So it's, it's a little bit scary. And uh, <clears throat> we also have uh, an elementary school age child who has friends all around uh, the neighborhood and they are constantly crossing the street to get to each other's houses. And the cars are parked so closely together that these little kids have no clear line of sight. So the only way that they can see as to whether they can cross the street safely is to actually get between those cars and try to find a place to look between them. And it's, it's just very unsafe. And I think all the time that one of these kids is going to potentially be hit by a car. So I, I just wanna echo other folks who have spoken and say that for me, it's really a safety concern. It's not about sharing the neighborhood with students. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you. And now can we welcome back James Barna? Welcome back. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Aren't you guys tired of this? Two years ago, this issue had a full airing and it was decided. And here we are again with the same arguments and a lot of the same untruths. I want to start with the fact that um, so much that's put out as factual information regarding this issue isn't factual at all. Um, Ken Brock, uh, the, the, excuse me, the town manager um, has refused to consider viable, doable alternatives that will resolve the parking issues on this street. With regard to the people that park too close to the driveways and the town can set whatever limits next to driveways it wants. First, he says that the police won't monitor that. Well, people can call and ask the police to ticket people. And if you've got a police force that can't do that, then this town has a lot bigger problems than I think. The other issue is that this, the, 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 one of the suggestions is that painted lines could be put on the sidewalk to, uh, to demarcate the no parking places that are next to the driveway. It would require a total of 22 strikes, 22. I could do that in three hours. But, but Mr. Brockman says that his town cannot do that. That is a flat out lie. The other problem he said was that, oh, those lines won't last anymore. Well, you know what? Those lines will last several years. There are so many easier alternatives that it's just astounding that, um, that the same shambling craziness is put forward. Let me talk about another issue here, okay? All of these UMass people, all of these students you talk about, those are all your town residents. They live here for nine months out of the year. There is not some mystical line between the university and the town. You guys have parking issues. 
You have parking demand. You have a community that needs places to park inexpensively to learn and study. And all I see is that this town trying to exclude people because they're the wrong kind of people. The fact of the matter is Lincoln Avenue is safer for the parking than the lack of parking. You take away the parking and the speed that people drive down that street is going to triple. Now, we do have issues with safety, but those issues of safety are at Amity Street and Lincoln Avenue. And your town still has done nothing to address the safety issues there. That's where the accidents are. The other issue is that you guys have never sought any input from the people that actually park there. And you know what? It doesn't really matter if they're students or not. They are all your residents. This town needs a comprehensive way for regular people can, to park, whether they're going to universities or not, without you guys just excluding parking every time a resident, uh, excuse me, a property owner demands it. Start doing your job. Start providing parking to all of your community. This is a community of 70,000 people, 70,000. Quite obviously, there needs to be parking on the street. There needs to be parking all over the place. And this community still acts like it's 1955. We're on our way to having parking restrictions like in Cambridge, Massachusetts where nobody can park on the street if they don't own a piece of property. This is the next march. And then you know what? You're gonna have another group of landowners doing the same thing because they don't like students in front of their house. Thank you, James Barner, for your comment. Can I just say one last thing? Without well, the university- Wrap up. Okay. Without the universities in this community, this place would be Turner's Fall. I mean, the fact of the matter is the universities are the engines that drive this town. And this, this town needs to take steps to provide resources, parking, and not treat people who live here as students as if they don't belong here or they are special kind of people who need very special rules about how to live. Thank you. Thank you, Jim Sparna. And we can now welcome back to the room, Ken Rosenthal. Thank you. I just wanna quickly respond to Mr. Barna, who says these are all our people and we're denying them their parking. It's not so, Mr. Barna, first of all, a lot of a number of those cars that park there have out of state license plates. I would suggest to you that probably the majority of the other cars there that have Massachusetts plates do not live in the town of Amherst. They're not paying their auto excise taxes to the town of Amherst. They're not paying their real estate taxes to the town of Amherst. And again, the number is a small number of people every day, just maybe 20 or 24 people taking advantage of the fact that we happen to have a road that is too narrow to accommodate them. And I would emphasize again, uh, just for the record, that Sunset Avenue is even narrower. Thank you again for letting me have a, another opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ken Rosenthal. So we are coming to the end of at least the hands that I see up. There's so, one more. Okay, yes, I see one more. Could we, this will be last call. If there's anyone else who has not yet made a comment and would like to do so, please, Raise your hand. Um, if not, we will uh, end with Tom Bernard. Hey, um, thank you. I just wanted to note I live on Lincoln Avenue also, and I was looking today, and there are a number of rental properties on Lincoln that are occupied by students, but I just visually saw that they all have parking uh, off the street. So we're not, I, at least to the best of my knowledge, we're not excluding um, any of the residents of Lincoln, including the, the many students uh, who live here. Um, and I would certainly support the university charging less for parking. Um, I think it's a simple cost benefit analysis that people make. And I would love to see the people visiting the university parking on university um, lots for free. That'd be great. So thanks so much. 
Thank you, Tom Bernard. Have a great night. Okay, so I think this will conclude. Oh. Okay, I guess we, that we will conclude our public comment and questions and come back now to counselors. Do we have counselors with questions for Jennifer, Tracy, and or Paul? Okay, Dorothy, your hand was up. Please go ahead. You're muted. Yep, thank you. Um, the question of do we have stats on accidents? Yes, those were provided by DPW. I don't have them at my fingertips, but the, he was uh, questioned in detail, was this more than other places and whatever? And the fact was, according to um, Guilford Mooring, there were the number of accidents caused him to say no parking at any time on Lincoln, whereas that's the residents had asked for a much more limited thing. So yes, there are records on that. Um, and yes, we did ask about lines being painted, but we were reminded that we're in New England and that we have snow and that you cannot, even if that line is beautifully bright yellow, you can't see it under the snow. So that uh, wouldn't work. And then somebody asked, well, what if we put stanchions all up and down the street? And, and that was a pretty unattractive alternative. Um, I have to say, I was very um, um, touched by the mother uh, of children because the, dis the description she gave of children trying to cross between tightly parked cars, that's how cars parked on my street when I lived in Sunnyside, Queens. Because I mean, you can imagine, New York City, parking is a real, real problem. And you, you would park with your car touching the car in front of you. And yes, in fact, um, a child on my street did die uh, and it was surprising. It wasn't a little child, it was a, a 10 year old. We think that they're safer, but following a dog, you know, just following a dog that ran into the street and went between the cars and, and got killed. So I see that as a very real possibility. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can, I, I do agree, we've gone through this a lot and I think we've got a lot of things we wanna spend our time on. So I'm hoping that we can agree to go forward um, with um, uh, the proposal that Jennifer is bringing. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Anna. Thanks, yeah, I would, um, Paul, if it's possible to have um, Chief Livingstone uh, or someone from, from fire and, and police look at the, um, the proposal that's on the table right now uh, and just kind of get their feedback on whether or not this would solve, a, well, one, whether they believe that there is a safety problem um, at this point on those streets, and then two, if the proposed changes as written would um, would solve that, uh, or if they believe that there's a different solution that would, that would um, solve a problem if there is a problem that they believe. Does that make sense? Yes, I, I'll do that and also can ask the uh, chief, the police chief, for uh, a history of any accidents over the last 10 years or whatever period. It's yeah, been. and I appreciate, I know that um, Jennifer had mentioned there was info in your last report, and so I'm looking back through that as well, but um, it would be helpful to specifically get feedback on the proposal that's on the table um, as well. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that honor. Andy, there you are. Yes. Um... I it was on the TSO in the, when this was considered a year ago, and uh, one thing that we had developed in TSO as a policy and was adopted by the committee, since it hasn't been repealed, it's still a policy of the committee, and that is that there was a uh, uh, list, of, there's a parking criteria um, document that was developed, and uh, we haven't really discussed it yet in this um, round of the, of the consideration, but I would actually urge us to do so. I don't think that it's going to necessarily change minds, but it, I think it will inform the discussion if it did. And I can put it up on the screen if, I, if it was agreeable to the chair to just point out a couple of things in it that would be particularly helpful and give um, or the alternative is to just make sure it gets sent again for the next discussion when we reach a conclusion on this. Um, I don't think that it matters strongly. 
please go ahead and pull it up. Okay, let me see if uh, I can uh, find it really quickly. Uh, I believe this is it. So let me try. Nope, that's the wrong one. So I have to stop share. That was from last week. Uh, I'll give it one last try. And if not, I'm going to go to plan B um, because it, uh, it's just. A, Athena. Thank you, Anika. Um, I just wanted to point out that we're still in the hearing portion of the meeting, and the, oh, the last true. part of the hearing is uh, yeah, questions I from counselors. Think, Excuse me. The last that. part of the hearing is questions from counselors, and then there would be a vote to close the hearing. We didn't notice deliberation and recommendation you're, you're on correct. this agenda. You're correct. And I think so we voted a little bit into the discussion part. Yeah. And but uh, thank you for pointing that out. Um, and and Andy, if you wanted to. Um, to share that parking criteria document with the committee before the next meeting, and that would be appropriate. Okay, thank I think you. I, I think I will do that is the easier because we're gonna have uh, further discussion at that time. So I'll leave it as the, the question is whether the committee was interested in looking at it. And the answer seems to be that it is. So I'll just forward it for the next meeting. Okay. Send it to uh, the chair tonight. Thank you, Andy. So do we have any other council questions? Okay. Well, with that, I guess we can take a first thank Jennifer and Tracy for joining us. Thank you so much. And thank you for having for us. Thank you. Time and effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we go in the so I'll just sign off. I can turn back on. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. I can, I can move you to attendees, Jennifer, if you wanted Great. to stay. Thank you. And so we'll have a vote to close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Andy. And okay, so Jennifer. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say Jennifer. I'm looking right at you, Dorothy. Excuse me, Dorothy. You're muted. I see you mouthing yes. Okay, yes. I vote yes. Okay, Andy. Yes. Anna. Yes. I mean, yes, and Shalini is not with us. Okay, so hearing is closed. Were there any other comments, thoughts? Dorothy, you look like you're ready. We want Dorothy. Okay. I just wanted to say it's really ironic that the new dorms are being built on parking lots, the big, big visitors' parking lots. Um, so I, I do, there's one place where I agree with Mr. Barna, which is that I think UMass has got to come up with some better parking options because um, it's really important. People who want to see the campus should be able to park without having to go on a big five mile hike. But that's it. I was I was curious. I did walk uh, the area with Jennifer, and I know that where right next to where the uh, the dorms are coming up, there is parking lot space. Um, I know that we'd be taking it, but I'm not sure is will that remain a parking lot or will there is that slotted for another upcoming dorm? Not sure. Okay, uh, anything else? All right. So with that, we're moving on. Uh, now, Athena, I'm gonna to lean to you with this one. I think we've had a lot of public comment. Does that conclude our public comment? Uh, would we still have enough? Uh, you can take general public comment at this point. Okay. Uh, oh, I see Andy first, Andy. Actually, I have an additional question for um, Athena and, and for the chair. And that is that the council and the committee have received a tremendous number of emails related to this issue. And 
do they get considered automatically a part of the record or does somebody have to move to make them part of the record? Um, they're automatically part of the record. They're posted in the council comments on the website. They're not differentiated by topic or anything like that. So they're just posted along with the rest of the council comments um, periodically. Which then leaves the question, are they part of the consideration that the committee can may use during its discussion of the issue? Yes, the way the hearing is noticed, it, it stated that um, the committee would take comments in, in person at the meeting or virtually at the meeting and in writing. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, with that, I can see the hands now. Um, if there is anyone who would like to make a general public comment with us in the audience, would you please raise your hand now? Okay, I see Pam Rooney. Hi, Pam. Hello, thank you for calling on me. Um, I wanted to reiterate what I heard from a couple of people, and that is that we take a serious look at um, the park at a parking review and to uh, to really assess what we have in town. this This is one of many issues of parking concerns uh, throughout the downtown and and obviously now in the surrounding areas. Um, I would also uh, encourage us broadly to uh, to reach out seriously and strongly with landowners, I would say around the perimeter of, of the town where we could generate uh, or encourage the creation of um, park and ride areas. Uh, it sounds like, sounds like maybe that was pursued for a while but I think that we have a decent enough bus system. I would love to take the pressure off the in-town and, and close to campus neighborhoods for this parking drive. I would strongly disagree with the gentleman that said, these are our people. I, I think given the, the presentation that I saw that they in fact are not here during the summer. They do not live in Amherst and they, and they are folks that need to park close to the campus, whether it's for staff or whether it's uh, for classes. So having a better uh, periphery system of park and ride would be something that I would love to participate in. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Okay, so that concludes our area of public comment. And we can move right along into what we do not have appointments for today. Uh, so we can move on to the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Okay. Uh, we have a motion to or move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Oh, did you make the motion? Anita? Yes. No, okay. That's I asked question. and then made it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Anna. So, uh, Dorothy, you're muted again. Yes. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, Anna? Aye. Um, and I and Andy. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, with that, um, we have uh, moved right along this evening. I would like to thank everyone for their time and patience. Thank you to everyone who joined us this evening. And with that, we will adjourn the meeting. And oh, let me just say uh, for our next meeting, we will be reviewing the uh, sewer regulations and bylaws we have again Amy and Anna at it again so we're very thankful for that that will be next week and we should also expect some appointments and let me just pause Paul did you have a question yeah just a note so next week on October 20th is your next meeting correct yes and that's when you will be deliberating making a decision on the Lincoln I expect to make a decision on Lincoln Avenue and you'll and we'll I'll talk with you about who needs to be there and 
Yes, that will be helpful. I definitely touch Thanks. base with you so we can get all needed here with us. Um, mm -hmm. I expect that to be a, a thoughtful deliberation. Okay, so with that, everyone have a wonderful evening and we will reconvene on 1020. I believe we are 6.30 p.m. Yes, thank you. Okay, good night. Hey, good night. Okay.